Let's practice translating algebraic expressions together. For these first few problems, let's go ahead and practice writing an algebraic expression when we're given a verbal sentence. For number one, we have this verbal sentence, six more than a number c. So six is one of the parts of this expression as well as the variable c. It looks like the two terms we're gonna have for this expression is going to be six as well as a number c. And when we see this phrase more than, it means that we're going to be adding here. Now hopefully you're thinking the algebraic expression is either going to be 6 plus c or c plus 6, but since it says 6 more than, we're actually going to write the c first here, and then we're going to go ahead and add on 6 afterwards. So c plus 6 would be our expression. For number 2, we have 48 divided by a number k. So 48 is going to be our first term here, and then we have a number k as our second term. Divided by is just what like it sounds like, so we're going to be dividing here. So division is just going to be from left to right, so 48 is going to go first, and then we're going to divide by k, so just like this, and write divide, and then write k. Another way that you could write this though is we could write this as a fraction as well, and we can write this as 48 in the numerator, and then write a fraction bar, and then write k in the denominator. So this would be an equivalent expression. For number three, we have seven fewer than a number p. So seven is gonna be one of our terms and then a number p is going to be our second term. Now the phrase fewer than means that we are going to be subtracting. So is it seven minus p or p minus seven? Well, if it's seven fewer than it, then we should be taking away seven. So we should write here that we have p minus seven. For number four, we have this expression of eight more than a number h. So eight is going to be one of our terms and then a number h is going to be our second term. The phrase more than means that we're going to be adding here. So it's either going to be eight plus h or it's gonna be h plus eight. Now because it's eight more than this value of h, then we should be adding on eight afterwards. So it's going to be h plus eight. So the eight's going to come afterwards here. For number five, we have this verbal sentence of triple a number f. So we have one variable here of f, and we're going to be tripling it. Keep in mind that when we triple something, we are multiplying it by three. Instead of writing f times three though, we're gonna go ahead and write three f. So three is gonna be the coefficient, and then f is going to be the variable part. So three f would be this algebraic expression. For number six, we have nine less than the product of eight and a number x. So nine is gonna be part of this expression. We have eight as well, and then we have a number x. So these are going to be a few pieces of this expression. Then notice this phrase of less than, which means that we are going to be subtracting at some point. And this phrase over here of the product of means that we are going to be multiplying two things at some point as well. Now, since multiplication is going to come before subtraction here, keep in mind that we are going to complete this multiplication part first. So we're gonna show the product of this eight and this number x. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that as eight multiplied by x. I'm gonna use a dot for multiplication right now, so eight times x. And then afterwards, we are going to be taking away nine from that because it's going to be nine less than that. So it's eight times x, and then it's going to be minus nine afterwards. To write this a little bit more simply though, we should go ahead and write this as eight x instead of eight times x. It does mean the same thing though. And then we're gonna show that we're subtracting nine because it's nine less than the product of eight and that number x. For number seven, we have four more than the quotient of a number e and five. We have a few pieces for this expression. We have four as well as a number e, so that's going to be our variable. And then we have the number five. The phrase more than means that we're going to be adding, so we're gonna add four onto something. And the phrase the quotient of means that we are going to be dividing two pieces as well. Now, similar to the last example in number six, division is going to take precedence or have more importance over addition here. So we're gonna go ahead and divide first. So the quotient of e and five, so that's going to be e divided by five. Go ahead and write that using division symbol for now. And then we're gonna say four more than that. So we have to add on four to that afterwards. So we have e divided by five plus four. Now again, you really wanna get used to using fraction bars to show division as well. So another way we could write this is going to be the quotient of e and five, but written in fraction form instead. And then we can go ahead and add on this four afterwards because it's supposed to be four more than that quotient. And then for number eight, we have three fewer than double a number y. So three is gonna be part of this expression, and then we have a number y as our variable. The phrase fewer than lets us know that we are going to be subtracting three from something since it's three fewer than it. And when we double something, that means we are going to be multiplying that thing by two. 
Now between subtraction and multiplication, multiplication is going to come first. So let's go ahead and make sure we double this number y before we subtract three from it. So let's go ahead and take this two and then multiply that by our y value. So it's gonna be two times this y. And it's going to be three fewer than that, so we're going to be subtracting three afterwards. Since it's not necessary to write that multiplication sign or that dot between the two and the y, we should just combine these and write two y because that means two times y, and then write that it is a little bit more simpler and write two y minus three. So there we just practice translating some verbal sentences into some algebraic expressions. Let's go ahead and see if we can go the opposite way and see if we can turn some uh, algebraic expressions into verbal sentences. So here, let's go ahead and focus on writing verbal sentences instead. And we're gonna do that when we're given these algebraic expressions. Keep in mind that there are several ways to write these verbal sentences, so make sure that all of them make sense to you. For number nine, we have this expression of x plus eight. So we have these two pieces of some number x and this number eight here, and keep in mind that we do have this addition sign that is between them. One verbal sentence we could write is the sum of some number x and eight. Or we could also say something like eight more than some number x. And a third verbal sentence you could write here is eight added to some number x. For number 10, we have this expression of y minus four. So y and four are going to be our two pieces here. One example of a verbal sentence here you could say is the difference of some number y. So some number y here and four. So that word difference means subtraction. Or we can write something like four less than some number y or maybe something like four subtracted from some number y. But I'm just gonna write these two examples down. For number 11, we have nine a. So this is all going to be one term together. Since 9a really means nine times whatever a is, we can say the product of nine and some number a, so that would be one thing that we could write over here. Or we can also just simply say that we have nine multiplied by some number a, just because you can't really see that multiplication sign in this expression, so I think that would be okay as well, just to show that you do know that it means multiplication. For number 12, we have c over six, which really means c divided by six, right? So let's just get a little bit more space here. Because we are dividing here, we can use this fancy word of quotient, and we can write the expression the quotient of some number c, so we don't know what c is, and the number six. Maybe one more way we could also write this, and say some number c divided by six. Another thing you could say here is maybe you have c, and then you are going to split it six ways evenly. That could work too. Here's number 13. So for number 13, we have this expression of 4x plus 9. So we have this 4x as a term, and then we have 9 as a term as well. Keep in mind that we have two operations here. We have 4 being multiplied by x, and then we are going to be adding 9 afterwards. A really good verbal sentence you could write here is going to be 9 more than the product of 4 and some number x. Hopefully this makes sense that we have this nine more than because we are adding nine afterwards at the end of the expression. And then this four X over here means four times X. So we really have the product of four and that number X here. So four times X would be the product of four and X. Now this one's a little bit more wordier, but you could say something like this where you have the sum of the product of four and some number X and nine. So we're basically saying that we are going to be having the sum. So we're adding two things, which makes sense. We're adding. So what two things are we adding? Well, the first thing is going to be the product of four and some number X. That's going to be the product right here. That's four X. And what's the second piece? The second piece is going to be this nine. So the number nine over here. For number 14, we have this expression of two R minus three. So two R is our first piece. And this three is our second piece. Just like in number 13, we do have two operations. This 2r means 2 times r, and we're going to be subtracting two things. We have 2r take away 3. A really good expression to write here is saying we have 3 less than the product of 2 and some number r here. So we're basically saying that we are going to have 3 less than, so we're subtracting 3. So 3 less than means we're taking away 3. And we're taking that 3 away from what? We're taking it away from the product, which means we're multiplying uh, two things, of 2 and some number r. So here's the product, 2r, and it's 3 less than that, so we're going to be taking away 3. Now, a little bit wordier, we could also say something on the lines of the difference of the product of 2 and some number r and 3. 
So hopefully this one makes sense too, because we have the difference, which means we are subtracting two things. What two things are we subtracting? It's gonna be the product of two and some number r, which is just really this two r over here, and three, so we're subtracting three. So it's a difference of these two pieces. For number 15, we have three minus this eight y, so three is one piece, and we have eight y as our second. We do have two operations here. One is going to be subtraction and one is multiplication. So let's make sure we include those. For this particular expression, I think this would be a great verbal translation here. So we can say the difference of three and the product of eight and some number y here. Okay, so again, we have the difference, meaning we're subtracting two things. That makes sense here. What are we subtracting? Well, we have three first, so that's gonna be the first thing. And what? Well, the second thing is going to be and the product of eight and some number y. So that's eight times y, and that's what we have over here, eight y. And another verbal translation we could write here is going to be the product of eight and some number y. So we're multiplying those two things, and that's going to be less than three here. So the product of eight and some number y means we're multiplying those two things, but that's being subtracted from three, so that's going to be less than three. So that expression of less than three means we're taking it away from it. All right, one final expression for number 16. We have this w minus five in the numerator, and then we have this two in the denominator of this fraction. A verbal sentence we can write here is the quotient of the difference of some number w and five and two. So this one's a little bit trickier. So it says the quotient of, which means we are dividing two things, that's this fraction bar. And what are the two things that we are dividing? Well, in the numerator, we have the difference of some number w and this number five. That's gonna be the first part we're dividing. And what's the second part? Well, the second part is going to be two. So here's the difference on top, and then here is the two that is on the bottom. And another good verbal translation we could write here is going to be half, since we are dividing by two, of the difference of some number w and five here. So half means we are dividing by two, which is this divided by two in the denominator. And it's going to be the difference of, we are subtracting two things, that's this minus sign, of some number w and five. So we're taking half of that difference. All right, so there you have 16 different practice problems. The second uh, eight problems here, we're taking these algebraic expressions and writing verbal sentences. And the first eight examples here, we're taking verbal sentences and writing algebraic expressions. Now, when you're writing these verbal sentences, keep in mind that there are more ways of writing them. These are just some popular ones that are probably pretty good to get to know first. Uh, feel free to write some other ones as well as you're practicing your vocabulary. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And as always, keep up the great work that you're already doing, and I'll see you in the next one.